Um, so Salamis is back. Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining for an evening session today. Um, you could be doing a lot of things. Ayana, thank you for being here as well. I love that thumbs up. I'm seeing right there. Um, and so you could be doing a lot of things with your time right now, and you decided to be with us. Um, and that's really great. Um, so if you're with us right now, you first off know about Education USA already, which is great. Um, you know about some of these writing workshops probably, which is also great. Um, I've been a writing instructor for a long time. Uh, my job is different now. I'm the English language coordinator here in Nur Sultan, so I actually mostly work with a program called Access. Um, but I, I do a lot of other stuff, and one of my favorite things that I did for the last few years in Kazakhstan uh, was these writing camps for students who are applying to universities in Europe and America and really around the world, um, also China and East Asia. And so um, I haven't done one of those camps in a long time, but it's really nice to be with you here today. This will probably last about two hours. Um, it may be a little less than that because we don't have so many people today, uh, but I'm happy if it, if it ends up lasting that long. Um, and like I was saying before we started, I will be glad to give you an opportunity for uh, communication, questions, things like that as well. Um, we're going to be doing a lot of talking in chat. So um, I'm going to share my screen now, and it actually will start off with a question that I'd like you to answer in our chat box, okay? Um, let me get us started now. So we're going to be talking about hook writing. Um, let me, just a moment here, I'm going to blow this up. There we go. All right, so you should see on the screen, it says the art of hook writing. Um, I think that's probably what you'll see here. Um, and I just want to ask, you kind of see this picture, it should be a big hint for you. Um, just in general, go ahead and tell me in, in the uh, chat box, what is a hook? If I ask you what a hook is, what is a hook? Why don't you go ahead and tell me in the chat? I'm going to keep, okay, so I've already got, let's see what we got. Eye-catching feature, that's good. Okay, Ali Khan, um, that's, that's good. Any other thoughts? Um, an intriguing part of the writing. That's true, Gohar. Um, it definitely should be. Any other ideas there? A phishing device. That's true. Absolutely. Uh, Noraya is, is correct. Um, and that's that's kind of what I've got here. Um, and so uh, something that will capture the reader's attention. These are all the right ideas. Okay. So we're going to learn how to do this using something called descriptive language today. Okay. Um, and so I'm going to start us off with a warm-up activity. And I'd like you, maybe in the chat box, um, uh, I was gonna kind of do this in breakout sessions, but it's okay, we're gonna do this in the chat box. I'd like you to think about your favorite movie. Um, if you don't have a favorite movie, I guess it could be a TV show or a serial um, or a book, um, any story. And I want you to describe how that movie starts. Now, I don't want you to say this. I don't want you to say the movie is about, okay? I want you to tell me what you see, what you hear, what's kind of going on. Just in the first, let's say, five minutes or less of the movie or show. Um, if it's a book, maybe just what happens in the first chapter or even the first couple of pages. Okay? Um, uh, Sam, can we just give them like two, three minutes uh, to think? And maybe yeah, they can actually just unmute themselves and uh tell the beginning of their favorite movie and maybe sure. other students can guess uh the name of the movie and write right. on their um ideas in the chat they i love that i love that so you should have an option i don't know if you will um they there might be a way to themselves. yeah you can unmute yourself um and if if you want to speak there might be a way you can like raise your hand or something like yeah, that. yeah you can they can raise hands great they can unmute themselves so, so I'll, I'll give you a couple for two, three minutes. minutes. Great. Um, Alisher, do you have uh, like more information that you want to tell us about your favorite movie? If yes, then you can unmute yourself and uh, you can give the beginning.
Um, how I met your mother, everyone knows. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking, Roshan, um, if if the students maybe find this difficult or maybe a little shy because we're there's a lot of us in this room maybe we could give an example first i'd, I'd be okay with that too um i don't know if that's necessary or i not. think uh like do you have anything in your mind i was struggling with that i was trying to th i was going to talk about the matrix and then i realized i don't know how it starts um i think you know how uh like how to find Nemo or find Nemo. Yeah, find oh, that's right. <laughs> Finding <laughs> Nemo. Okay, so has anyone seen the the the? I, I'm going to go ahead and call it a classic. Uh, Finding Nemo. Um, it's about two clownfish and a uh, another fish called Dory. Um, and so this starts with a uh, I guess you could say a mother and father clownfish. This is kind of a an orange and black fish, um, and they have a baby fish. And they clearly love this fish, and uh, and uh, everything seems to be going well. And suddenly, we hear some menacing or dangerous music, and I don't remember what exactly, but there is maybe an eel or some predatory fish, like a dangerous fish, comes out of nowhere, and chases um, the family, and actually injures the baby fish, who we later find out is Nemo and kills the mother. Um, and this kind of sets up the movie. Now, we don't know uh, necessarily what's going to happen next, um, but it does create a lot of attitude that we end up using later, um, this kind of love of the father fish um, and worry about his injured son, Nemo, who's kind of the hero of the story. Um, so that's that's kind of what we get, just those beginning couple scenes. Ah, I'm seeing the chat is kind of blowing up over here. Let's see what we got. Oh my goodness. Okay, I'm going to stop here for a second. Great. Love it. Sagita, Sagita, Sagita. One of my very favorite TV shows, The Good Place. Um, and so we're started with a main character who's a bit lost in a nice but unknown room, okay? Um, and I think shortly after that, we find out that this woman is dead, right? And so we don't, we don't know much else what's going on, but it's a very clean room, kind of an empty room. And all we really see is a sign that says, welcome, everything is fine, right? So that's, that's good, okay? Um, an outstanding mathematician sits in a police station. Interesting. Okay. Is it beautiful mind? No? Could be. I'm a mathematician. Just don't remember. <clears throat> oh, game of imitation. Okay. Okay. Shall we American? just move on? Oh, go ahead, Russia. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking that maybe we should move on and they will understand what you actually sure. Them sure. So, so the function of this, um, if we think about just the beginning of a movie, um, it often starts not at the beginning of a story, but in the middle. Okay. So someone actually used an example of actually a movie I really love, uh, American History X, um, which is a, a pretty gritty, difficult to watch movie. Um, but it starts in the middle of something. And in fact, if I look at this chat box, uh, we see that the beginning of that particular movie. Um, this was, uh, who said this, uh, Sheridan. Um, and so it actually starts with flashbacks. So we're, we're kind of going back to some information that happened before the start of the movie, okay? Um, a lot of times it starts in the middle of the action. Um, we don't know exactly what's going on. We're left with a lot of questions and there's often a lot of dialogue, okay? So even though we don't know what's going on, we are left wanting more. Um, this is kind of like what a hook is, okay? So, um, what we want to look at here, this is kind of like, I guess you could think of that as a scene in a movie. That's exactly what it is. And we want to try making a scene uh, in our essay, okay? And where do you think a hook should go? Why don't you go ahead and tell me in the chat, where would the hook be? 
I'm kind of, I'm trying to be pretty obvious about this. Um, <laughs> okay, and, and we're seeing this from, uh, yeah, Mariah's saying this is probably at the beginning of the essay. Um, right, at the beginning. So hooks are often at the beginning. Now you can use the kind of language that you would use in a hook anywhere in your essay um, for good effect, depending on the essay. However, um, it's the strongest place to have a good hook is at the beginning, okay? So a scene, which is what we wanna focus on here, takes place in real time. It, it works like a movie, okay? Um, and it usually contains dialogue uh, between characters and it should be used for important interactions and events. Oh, great, we got more people coming. That's a wonderful thing. So I'm gonna give you an example of a scene. And I'd like you to just read this, okay? And while you're reading this, why don't you tell me what is going on here? You can go ahead and just tell me in the chat what is going on. What do you think is going on? I guess we don't have a, a definite answer here. I think you can ask them uh, those questions that you usually ask, like uh, who the woman is. Sure, uh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. What kind so, of like so, uh, they understand from it? Yeah, yeah. What let me ask let me ask this question to start us off. What don't we know here? What 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 do we want to know that we don't know already? Let me see what the chat says. Well, so one thing we don't necessarily know is what is in that white envelope. What do you think the note says? Is it a good note? Is it a bad note? What do you think? All right, let's see what the chat says. Yeah, what was written there? We don't know what was written there, right? Do, do you think it's a good note? Like, is it positive? Is it negative? Let's see what we got here. Okay, we don't know why they're in the car. Okay, that's true. What else do we maybe not know? Yeah, who is that woman? We also don't know who the guy is, right? Um, it's kind of a mystery, definitely, right? Yeah. So there's a lot of questions here. Where's the car going, right? Um, do you, now, I'm gonna ask that question again though. Um, yeah, maybe the owner's missing, interesting. Um, so is, is, this a, is this a good note or a bad note? If you had to guess, what would you say? All right, let's see. And I think we're all gonna guess the same thing. Yeah, bad, 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 sad, bad, good. Now, now I'm going to agree with you, why? What is it in this language that lets us think there might be something kind of negative here? What kind of descriptions do we have that might let us think that this is going to be negative or dark? Any words in here or phrases that might make us think darkness or not good? Yeah, right, she's quiet. Okay, so I know you guys are pretty young, but if you're in a car with somebody and if you know them or if you don't know them, and there's a lot of silence in that car ride. And at the end of that car ride, they give you a note and say, read it later. Here's what you don't think. You don't think, oh boy, I can't wait to read this later. I bet it's great news. No, it won't be great news, right? So that quietness is definitely a sign that something is not right here, okay? Are there any other signs, things that we see, things we could hear, um, that, that would maybe tell us that this is something not so good here. Okay, let's see, I'm looking at the chat. Um, yeah, right, good. Um, yeah, okay, good. Alakhan, I, I also do. I, I imagine, maybe not rain, but I do imagine that dark atmosphere, and this is part of it, right? Um, we've got uh, an overgrown lawn. This is a lawn that has been forgotten, okay? Um, Ayana and Diana are, are both right on the money here as well. That means that you are exactly correct. The car door is squeaking. It's, er, er. This is not a new car, okay? So we've got a forgotten place. The lawn is kind of 
um, overgrown. It hasn't been cut anytime recently. Lawn is like the grass, um, if you're not sure. Um, the car is old, okay? Um, there's silence in the car. There's an envelope and we don't know what's in it, but we can imagine it's not good, okay? Um, and then there's this yellow house, and I guess we could imagine it any way we want to. Um, and so, you know, Ali Khan is imagining rain. I usually imagine this yellow house is not bright and beautiful yellow. It's kind of a, an old peeling paint um, that maybe doesn't look so good anymore. Um, that's what I imagine. Now, that doesn't mean that's what it is, right? But that's what I see, okay? Um, yeah. Okay, great. And so, and then we can make a lot of other guesses. So Shireen is saying that, you know, maybe she doesn't want to read the letter in front of, uh, want him to read the letter in front of her. Um, and why would she not want that? Maybe it's a negative thing. Okay, so uh, no one has guessed it really yet. But a lot of people say, mm, if I had to guess, I would say these people are in a relationship and that this is the end of the relationship. She's breaking up with him, right? Uh, now, we don't know that for sure, but it seems like a good guess. Um, I've had a lot of people guess in the past that maybe these are secret agents and that we're passing some information back and forth. And maybe that's true, but these are, if that's true, they're probably kind of poor secret agents because this doesn't seem like a very nice place. Um, but maybe, right? So, so either way, um, we can make some guesses. We're definitely left wanting more. We want to know what's in that note um, and, and so on, okay? This is a scene, and it's actually quite a hook as a scene, too. Okay, so again, that was a scene. It takes place in real time. It has dialogue, not much, but read it later, right? You don't have to have that dialogue, but it, 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 it's there definitely, and it could be. And it would be used for an important interaction or event. And in this case, what is that important interaction? Well, probably it's when um, the driver receives the white envelope from this woman, right? Now we're left with a lot of questions, but that feels pretty important somehow, okay? A summary is quite different. So summaries move quickly. They give the reader important highlights or reminders, um, and they're used for background information. So bits of summary often occur within scenes, even within hooks. Uh, to give an example, somebody above was talking about um, American History X and those flashbacks. Usually when we have flashbacks, we're getting little bits of summary. Um, some background information on a character that we will care about more later, right? So um, it's kind of a thing. Okay, so let me tell you the same story now, but as a summary. He remembered the letter she'd written him last summer. She'd given it to them on their last date. Okay, now we're seeing these words, right? A relationship after he'd driven her home. She'd said she never wanted to see him again. Okay, so it was bad news. He still had the letter tucked under his shirts in a drawer. Now that's a lot of information kind of packed into one place. Um, and we might have some questions. We might wanna know why did he keep the letter? We might think we already know the answer to that. That's up to you. But the truth is we don't have as many questions as we did here. And so for some kinds of writing that might be good. But when we want our reader to want more from us, this is not the kind of thing we want to do, okay? So we can think of it like this. A scene is like something out of your favorite movie. It puts you in the center of the action and it grabs your attention, okay? But a summary is more like having someone sit in front of you and tell you about your favorite movie. So instead of giving you descriptive language, they're just telling you what happened in the movie, okay? Um, so summaries are actually excellent for a lot of uh, writing lots of information in a short space. And when would we need to do that? Okay, uh, let me just ask you quickly in the chat, because I, I do think it's important to think about, mm, we're not using summaries today, but when would we use summaries? Can you think of any examples of time that a summary would be a good thing to write? Okay, let me see, let me see what's in the chat here. Okay, uh, conclusions. That's true, sure. Um, summaries are, are often good in conclusions. What else? A review of the film, yes. Um, so if you're reviewing a film or a book, a summary is pretty important. Anything else? Any other time the summary might be good? I'll give you a few more ideas in a moment here. 
Okay, well, maybe someone will add something here, but two other places that a, a summary is really important. If you're writing an academic paper and you need to do what's called an abstract um, or kind of a, uh, uh, yeah, okay, summary is kind of a deal breaker. An aftertaste is crucial for an impression. That's, that's true. Um, and so we may not get much of an aftertaste here, but we're, we're capturing all the major uh, key ideas, right? Um, if you're a journalist, if you're into news writing, summaries are really important. Okay, so there are times, I don't mean to say summaries are not good. I just mean that it's not really what we should be focusing on right now. Okay, to grab your reader's attention, um, it's really better to try to create some kind of scene. Um, and so the goal should be to try to put your reader there, wherever you are. Okay, and remember, your personal statement essay at the end of the day should be about you. It doesn't mean you can't write about somebody else but you should be writing about somebody else in connection to um, their impact on you, right? Um, it should always be, at the end of the day, about you. So try to put your reader where you were or where you are um, in that essay, okay? So um, going on to the next screen here. How do we do that, right? So scene is cool. How do we make a scene? How do we make a hook, right? Well, the first thing to do is to choose your scene. So you need to ask yourself, what is it you're going to be talking about? So find an example which you really can focus on to show your point and try using that for your hook, okay? Probably you've had sessions with Thomas or some other writing sessions through uh, the EdUSA program um, that have given you some of those ideas for what you would want to write your essay about, okay? What are the uh, essence objects, if you want to think of it that way, the, the essential things um, that are going to make up your essay, right? And, and so those things could make up your scene, okay? So for example, maybe I'm writing an essay and the task of my essay is to write about an experience that has changed my life. So what I'm gonna do is focus on my experiences in Kazakhstan um, so that my scene will be one from my life here in Kazakhstan. Now, your essay might be something different, but maybe this is what I would wanna do, okay? The important thing first is to choose your scene, okay? Um, let me see. I'm just going to keep an eye on the chat here, but I think we're okay. Yeah, good. Okay. All right. And so once you have your scene, you want to ask yourself, what descriptive language can I use? So descriptive language, these are kind of in a classical way. These are the five senses, okay? Things that we can taste, things that we can touch, things we can see, things we can smell, and things that we can hear. Okay. Now we don't have to use all of these senses in a hook. I usually use a baby as an example of one where we wouldn't use all these senses, right? Um, so we know that the touch of a baby is very soft, um, kind of delicate. The sight of a baby, often many people feel is very, very cute, adorable, um, kind of soft, fluffy skin in a way, if you want to think of it that way. The smell of a baby is usually uh, quite sweet and wonderful. It smells like milk, uh, but sometimes babies don't smell so good, right? Um, and the sound of a baby, um, is often kind of very joyous laughter, but it can also be uh, kind of terrible crying. Uh, but we wouldn't use all the senses because we're not going to talk about the taste of a baby, right? So it doesn't work for everything, uh, but it does work for some things. So remember, taste, touch, sight, smell, sound. I want you in the chat box, tell me about the taste, touch, sight, smell, and sound of Besh Barmak. Let's start with, let's start with the taste of Besh Barmak. Why don't you tell me in the chat, let's talk about the taste of Bish Barmak. Godlike. <laughs> okay, nice, Ali Khan. So what does it mean, though? Godlike to me might be different from godlike to you. Let's get a little more descriptive. Is it sour? Is it spicy? Imagine that you're uh, trying to describe it to, to someone who has never tried it, to so like a person in the United States and you really have to describe the taste because godlike can be like a good cheeseburger or a good steak. So, so Alec Han, your point here that bad horse meat is better than the best ham, that would be good as kind of a, like an opening hook quote maybe if you were gonna talk about the glory of like Kazakhstani food. Um, but it's, it's, mm, it's kind of descriptive, but I want, a, I want a little bit more here. Imagine a lot of you really will be going to school in another country and people won't know Bishpermak. So how would you describe it? Like Roshan just said. Uh, 
I hope you all ate dinner before this session. Think about like texture. I mean, Almas, it reminds you of your childhood. But if I am an American, uh, my childhood is different. Yeah, it wouldn't remind me of my childhood. Yeah. Just imagine that, let's say Thomas. Thomas have never been to Kazakhstan. He has never tried horse meat in his life. So, okay. Okay, so I would give anything to, okay, now here we go. Now, now there's a lot of different comments here, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick to one that, um, that, that actually works in a descriptive way. So the transition, this is Shirin's comment. The transition between the meat and the dough is juicy. Now I'm understanding that, right? A little bit sweet taste, melts in your mouth like mother's milk, okay. Okay, I can get into that, all right. Um, now, what about, what about the, the touch? Is it hot? Is it cold? Is it, is it, I don't know, give, give me some description. Uh, the, the touch of Bishbarmer. Is it like slippery? Yeah. Is it like, I don't know, breezy? Yeah, how would you, you want to create an image. You're, you're, you're kind of like a painter here. You're, you're painting an image in, let's say, Thomas's mind of, of what this delicious food that you love is. Because delicious is not enough of a word. Like when you say delicious, I think of ice cream, right? But ice cream is not the same as fish per month. Maybe we can go with touch. Yeah. I know touch. How, um like this onions, like uh how do you feel? They're like a bit crusty. So when you chew them, they're not like this soft um onions, but at the same time not raw onions. Or the touch of um potatoes. Or uh, I know like structure of meat, like horse meat, it's um, not like soft. It doesn't melt actually. Okay, now, now I love this one. Onions are like when you touch a snail. I, I don't, that's maybe not the most attractive descriptive <laughs> description of the onions, but it's great. It's very descriptive. That's excellent. Um, okay, the dough slips out of your hands because of the juicy gravy. We're getting it guys. This is what we want, okay? Wonderful. Um, now, what do we smell? Let's move on to smell. What do you smell when you smell Beshbarmak? What is the smell? Smell from kilometers. <laughs> okay, so you can smell it from kilometers away. Um, but again, that's, so I guess that is kind of descriptive because it, it, it lets us know the strength of the smell, right? And it also lets us know your association with this, this food that's so important to you. Salty with a smoke taste. That's very descriptive. Um, that's good. Okay. What about sight? Now here, I don't want you to think just about the bish. I want you to think about where you would eat the bish. So where would you eat it? Where would you eat bish parmak? Where do you eat it? Not Burger King. Where where do you eat Bish Parma? Okay, at a wedding. Okay. Anywhere else? At home? Okay. So with either of those, I, I'd ask for a little bit. That's those are both great answers. So a little bit more description, right? Like what's the wedding look like? Um, I know my wedding, uh Roshan was at my wedding and it only had about 40 people in it. It's different from a Shimkent wedding, right? Um, at home, your home table might look different from my home table, right? So this is good, Alkhan. Everyone's around a rounded table and a big family gathers together to eat it with a guest who's you, right? You go to your guest's house. Um, so what else is there, guys? Uh, your, your family's there, of course. The Bishbarmak, what else? I, I, as an example, Barsaki might be there, might be something to describe. What else? What else is there? 
Or maybe you can say how it's served because it's like served on a huge, huge plate, like tabak. Yeah. Okay. Or, okay. Uh, you can talk about the process when uh, people bring it. Like you try to clear up your table so you will have space for that huge plate. Yeah, yeah. Or like awesome. you wait uh, till the moment when you can start like eating food because usually people never eat anything before because they need yeah. like space for it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and actually part of what I'm loving here, usually people associate Bishbarmak with kind of positive feelings. Gohar's got some frustration here. So you sit in on a wedding and the waiters are giving everybody else the Bishbarmak and you're still waiting for yours. Right. So there's a little bit of frustration kind of delayed satisfaction there. Like, so that's, that's, that's an interesting feeling as well, right? The teacups around. Um, okay, wow, Noraya's got a little, little bit of a, <laughs> a dialogue here, right? The freshly bold milky dough. I love it. I love it. And fan, Besh Burmach fan fiction is the best kind of fan fiction. That's great. Um, okay, and so, and so last question here. What does Besh uh, sound like? I know that's weird. It doesn't. It doesn't growl or meow or anything. What does Bishbar Mike sound like? What is the occasion in which Bishbar Mike is eaten sound like? It sounds like a horse. I hope not. Um, I hope it's cooked better than that. Um, well, it's, it certainly is from a horse. Sounds like a little baby. Okay. Sounds like okay. Um, it's like when you eat ramen or pasta, so you might hear, um, at least I know this might sound gross, but, um, yeah, it's, it might serve like, it might sound like everybody trying to cooperate and serve a dish. You might hear a lot of plates clanging. Um, in my case, I would hear, I have a five-year-old son, so I would hear him asking for more juice, probably. Um, you can hear people slurping, um, and, and maybe eating things. You can probably hear fingers kind of moving around, noisy and cheerful company. So what we're doing, guys, this is just Besh Parmak, but you can do this with anything. We're creating a scene. The goal, again, um, that's that's great, Noraya. So so this might be something to dig into with your essay. Besh Parmak reminds you of childhood lullabies sung by your mom. Fascinating, right? And so And so this is the kind of thing that we can maybe start to dig into. I was doing, I'm just gonna get off track for a little bit here for a second. Um, I was doing kind of a thought experiment with myself lately, uh, cause I miss my, my parents. They live in America and I'm, I'm here in Kazakhstan. And obviously with the uh, COVID-19, I can't get back to see them very easily. I was thinking about the music that they gave me in my childhood and how it's influenced me um, in different ways. And I started to make some of those connections like you're making right there, Naraya with the, the Beshbar Mak and the childhood lullabies. But those kind of connections can actually be a really good basis for an essay. Um, and so what we want to do, again, remember your words are like paint. And so what we're trying to do is paint a picture for the reader, okay? All right, so um, we could go on and on with this, but I am going to move on, okay? I hope you can see there's a lot we can talk about even just with this image of Besh, right? So. We're gonna go back to my example, which you've already forgotten about because for the last 10 minutes, we've talked about Bishbar Mark. So here was the example. Um, the task was to write an essay about an experience that's changed my life, right? So this is an essay opening paragraph that I decided to write. Um, and so I'm focusing on my experiences in Kazakhstan and my scene is gonna be one from my life here in Kazakhstan, okay? Um, and so here it is. And I'm going to ask you, you see the question at the bottom of the screen here, what language am I using? What descriptive language am I using? And how am I putting you in the scene? So I know you can read it, but I wrote it and I, I might as well narrate it for you as well. About a block away from my university, I decided to turn my headphones off. The crunch of fresh snow under my boots was music to my ears anyway. As I climbed the steps to the front door, careful not to slip on any ice. I pondered what might come today. Oscar's jokes causing laughter throughout the room or another poignant question from Idana about our reading. It was a challenge every time and one that I cherished as much as the silky warmth of my afternoon tea. 
I was a long way away from America for sure, but I had to admit that I felt at home here. Okay, so what descriptive language am I using? Um, let's start with sounds. Go ahead and tell me in the chat box. Are, are there any sound descriptions that I'm using here? All right, let me look at the chat. Okay, the crunch, the crunch of that snow, right? We can hear that. Um, careful steps might have a sound. That's interesting. I, I usually think of that more as a sight, um, but I guess we could we could think about very light uh, step sounds. Yeah, okay, I can see that, Alejandro. Yeah, cool, cool. Um, any other sounds? Not not really. Okay, yeah, laughter, good, right? Um, maybe the question. Okay, and also turning the headphones off. I know that one's weird. I, I used to have a uh, a set of headphones in Karaganda. I was I was a teacher in Karaganda for a while, um, and they had an on off switch. Um, and so when I would turn it off, it would make kind of a beep. And so for me, that was a sound. Uh, but for a lot of people, our, our headphones don't do that, right? So okay, so those are some sounds. What about uh, touch? Any touch in here? Any touch? Absolutely, Sagita, you got it. So this is one, the silky warmth of the tea, right? So that is a touch, even though it doesn't maybe seem immediately like it is. So silk, um, if you're not familiar, is a very soft fabric, very soft. Um, comfortable, right? And so I don't like tea that is like dangerously, we could say scalding hot, uh, tea that burns my mouth. I don't want that. I want comfortable warm tea, especially in the winter. I, I live in North Kazakhstan and that's something I really look forward to is that comfortable warmth of tea, okay? So that's kind of something that I'm trying to get there as well, okay? Now I don't have any smells in here. I probably could have. I could have talked about the smell of the, uh, the tea. Um, if I wanted to make this this funnier, I could talk about um, the the okay, yeah, sure, the the touch of the snow, maybe under the boots. I guess you could say that. Um, but if I wanted to talk about smell, I could I could talk about the smell of Oscar, I guess, or something like that. I, I didn't do that, right? I wasn't going for that kind of essay. Um, but there's there's other senses I could have used here, right? That's how I'm trying to put you into a scene. I'm not going to pretend that this is great writing. This is just an example that I can use to give you some descriptive language uh, kind of in an example here, okay? So this is not necessarily great writing, but this next screen I think is. So I'm gonna have you read this. This is actually from a student who is applying to a graduate program in the United States. And then I'm gonna ask you some questions, okay? But I'll give you just about one or two minutes to read this first. Okay, so let me ask you in the chat, um, if you're still reading, that's fine. What's going on here? What do we think's going on here? What is this about? <laughs> Alejandro said, ew, okay. Yeah, not for everybody, definitely. Um, but really important for certain people. So let me ask you, first question, what is this about? Childbirth in a nutshell, yes, good. Um, and if you're not familiar with that phrase, in a nutshell means kind of in a summary, right? And so what do you think this person was applying for? What kind of program? Yeah, sure, medicine. Something in medicine, um, I think more specifically, this was somebody who was um, applying for a program in obstetrics, gynecology, okay? So a medical student, right? 
Um, and so there's a lot of, now we might think this is gross, uh, but I wanna say that even that is a compliment to this writer because what that does, what that means is um, this is impactful enough, descriptive enough that you feel that emotional reaction that ew, right? Like Ali Khan had, or you might not feel that, but either way, there's something powerful here. And it is directly a result of this descriptive language. Now, I don't think we have on this chat um, I'm sorry, on this Zoom call, I don't think we have um, annotations. Looks like we don't. Otherwise, I would ask you to underline stuff, but we'll just go through this a little bit. I'm going to go sentence by sentence and kind of lay out for you um, what I think is, is really coming out of this that is very good as a hook. So just this first sentence, through seven-year-old eyes, I watched in terror as my mother grimaced in pain. We get within that first phrase the age and context of this situation through seven-year-old eyes. We were immediately put into the eyes of a seven-year-old. Now we're imagining this. Now, we all have different background experiences, just like Thomas maybe doesn't know much about Mishpar Mar, um, but you do, right? However, we do all remember being seven years old, okay? Everybody was seven. Nobody just magically grew up and, and was born at 15 years old, right? So we know what it's like to be uh, seven, we know what it's like to watch something in terror, right? Terror is not good. Terror is a very bad thing. As my mother grimaced in pain. So a grimace is like a painful look on the face. Um, here's what we don't know after that first sentence. We know that there's a seven-year-old. We know the seven-year-old is scared. We know that the mother is in a great deal of pain, but we don't know why. So what that does, even just that first sentence, makes us want to read more. Okay, and that's what we do in the next sentence. I held her hand, that's touch. Remember, we're looking at the senses. Wiped her forehead with a cool wet towel, again, touch, and longed for the pain to subside. Okay, so again, we still don't know what's going on, uh, but we understand that this is a child who's very worried about their mother in pain. Now we get some summary. Remember that sometimes in hooks, we get some background information. Um, or if you wanna think about it like that example from American History X, we get some flashback, right? So all our long discussions, all the maternity books, that word maternity is the first clue um, that we're gonna be talking about uh, motherhood and childbirth, all the studied fetus pictures, did little to prepare me for the birthing process. So um, a lot of times students, when we write these hooks, wanna have some kind of mystery so that people want more right? That's great. You can do that. But notice what happens in this third sentence here. By the third sentence, we have some clarity on what we're talking about. We're not letting the mystery go for so long that th there, there's a big difference between wanting more and just being confused, right? So as a reader, we don't want to be confused. Um, and so this clarifies for us. This lets us know what is this paragraph going to be about, okay? Um, and so then during the long labor, I frequently walked out of the room. Now this is a sight, right? Pacing, uh, kind of walking back and forth quickly, stressed out, torn between fear and loyalty. Okay, a little bit more summary here. My two younger sisters were with grandma, away from chaos. And although my parents thought I was sufficiently mature to watch the birth of my brother, I was frightened. So we understand with that sentence that this is not just mom and, and, and a child, right? That there's actually a whole family here parents so there's a father as well there's grandma okay um there's two younger sisters we've got a whole family here and we also understand more specifically this is the birth of the brother i want you to think about how much more effective this paragraph is so far than just saying i saw my baby brother get born and it had a big impact on my life right now that would be the summary version but it's also really not flashy it's not really grabbing my attention or making me want much more right now we get kind of the, the fireworks section of the descriptive language here. Lots of description. Blood. Uh, blood is good if it's inside your body, but in the, in the context of this writing, we understand that blood is kind of scary for the seven-year-old. Screams, also scary. Breathing techniques, <laughs> also scary, right? Tight squeezes on small hands. Again, we've got some touch. And that tight squeeze, that's the mom squeezing tightly on, on the child's hand. And that's that's also kind of tense, also kind of scary. And later, now we're not talking about transitions now, but that word later is tremendously important. It's moving us from this kind of negative imagery or, or tense, nervous imagery to a more calming, joyful imagery. 
And later, smiles. Well, smiles are good. A beautiful baby, that's certainly good. Sisters crowding, in this case, that's a good thing. Coos, which are like baby laughs, right? And so we have this kind of happy sound and laughs. Made my first experience with obstetrics one of the most memorable and unique experiences of my life. So again, we're using all of this descriptive language um, to create somewhat of a mystery, to make the reader want more, and to finally lead to this, uh, to this tremendous moment that had a huge impact on a child's life and made them, we understand now later in life, want to pursue a career in obstetrics. Okay, questions about this so far? This is what hook writing can and ideally should look like. Okay, so I guess I want, Roshan, I kind of, I'm not, I'm not sure, should we take a break today or not? I don't know how that works with you usually. Um, like how long is going to be a break? I, I don't know that we need one. Um, I wasn't sure, a two hour I think session. We, I think we're fine. Okay. Then I'm not going to give much of a break. Um, if you need to take a break during this next activity, feel free, but I would like you to write during this next activity, okay? I'm going to show you a picture, and this is a picture, this is a uh, an example of surrealism. So uh, I was really trying to be careful with this session. I, I usually use a painting by the artist Salvador Dali, um, but I wanted to be careful with this session to do things that were safe uh, for copyright purposes, especially because it is being recorded. And so this is actually a copyright safe image that I've taken from the internet um, to share with you. Uh, kind of a wild looking scene here. If you're not familiar with surrealism, it is something that is beyond real, something that is kind of imaginary, right? And so I want you to look at this and I want you to imagine that you are finding yourself in this room. And I wanna know what you do, but also what do you experience in this room? I'm specifically thinking, what do you see? What do you smell? What do you hear? What do you taste? And what do you touch if you find yourself in this room? I'm gonna have you write for about 10 minutes and I'm gonna put on some jazz music while you do that. Now, you could write on a piece of paper in front of you if you prefer. Um, you could write in a section of your phone if that's how you're watching this, or you could write on your computer if you're like me and you're working on your computer. Um, you don't have to share this with us yet, but we will share this writing with each other in a little bit. There aren't any right answers. The only right answer is, are you using descriptive language? So remember, try to create a scene Try to put us there. What do you experience if you are inside of this painting? I'm gonna play some jazz music for about 10 minutes that will help us to be there. Are there any questions before I get started? Great, Roshan, thank you very much for, for sharing that. Um, she's, she's, Roshan has shared the senses with us. Any questions? This will be about a 10 minute activity. If you need to take a minute or two to use the restroom or something else, you can do that at this time. Okay? Um, I think we have, we need oh, sorry. to describe uh, a situa uh, us in this situation with flowing. Yeah, right. I, oh, sorry, maybe, yeah, Roshan, if you need to clarify that or if we need to. Uh, do you want them to write like um, a paragraph or you want them to write just kind of like bullet points? Uh, it could be either way. I'm comfortable either way. I guess if you really want to practice like what you would do for your essay, you could try this in paragraph form. Um, but what I'm really focused on here is your descriptive writing, right? So try to put us there. Try to, try to describe your experience if you are in this scene. So this could be a first person type thing. I guess that's kind of what I'm imagining. If you prefer writing about someone else here, you could do that too, I'm okay with that. But I, I imagine this is a first person thing. I don't know, am I answering questions, Roshan, or, or do you think there's more we should talk about? No, I think um, it's okay. So just uh, those students who feel comfortable writing like a paragraph, and maybe like imagining a situation. For me, like I see this and I kind of think about uh, Jumanji. 
I don't know why, but I was like, oh, yeah. this is <laughs> And yeah, I already sure. hear I the sound. Uh, but if you don't feel comfortable writing a paragraph, which is difficult, and maybe 10 minutes is not enough, mm -hmm. then just try bullet points. Uh, totally fine. Yeah. yeah. We, we what, what I really want, here, here's what I want to focus on. Try at least one sentence um, or, or bullet point for each of those five senses, okay? At least one. And you can use more if you want. Yeah. Sorry, Roshan, I didn't mean to cut you off. Anything else? Uh, I think they have like 10 minutes. Yeah, that's right. Guys, you can just write it down on your like pieces of paper. You don't need to write everything in the chat. And maybe mm -hmm. some of you will uh, then share. Okay, I'm going to play some music now. And uh, right. we'll just work on some writing, okay, for about 10 minutes here. So I've also got copyright safe jazz today.
Sorry. Sorry. Uh, so, okay. Um, looks like uh, looks like we've already got a couple people contributing some ideas here. That's wonderful. Um, we'll kind of read through this. If you want to turn on your microphone and, and read what you've got, I'm welcoming that as well. Um, but interesting picture. I just found this picture today, um, and I'm pretty happy we've got it. Uh, so thanks, everybody. Good stuff. Let's see what we've got here so far. Um, and so I'll leave it up to you if you want to read it, or if you don't, uh, you can do it. If you don't, that's fine. Um, let's see what we got here. Wow, a lot of people contributing. Um, so Roshan, what do you think? Should I, should I read this? Should I let the students read it? Should, should we just have everybody read the, the chat without a voice doing it? Or what do you think? Um, I'm not sure, but uh, maybe some students want to read it out loud. Sure. It, there are some have... like nice ideas. Uh, we have um, Alejan, we have Shireen. Yeah. Um, we also have Gohar and Ayana. Yeah. So who so, wants to volunteer? Who wants to read theirs? You can unmute yourself. Yeah. Come on, guys, we don't have that much time. After this, I have another two hour webinar, so. Oh my goodness. Yeah. My um, training level two uh, had to be in March, but mm -hmm. it was canceled and they did it online. Well, ну, so. Ian, I... uh, yes, may I read? Yeah, sure. Uh, thank you. Um... Uh, okay, it's slight simple, but let me read. Uh, inspiring, inspiring waterfall in front of me. Uh, waterfalls and uh, hit the floor, enclosing every corner of my room, or of a room I'm in. Uh, droplets by hitting the floor become uh, water dust and freshen up my face. Uh, slight cold water already touched my knees, and I feel how the water takes me off the ground. Uh, that's all. Okay, great. So I, what I heard a lot there um, was a lot of touch. Um, you've got the water kind of hitting your, your, your knees, your feet um, as you go. You've also got the sight of the, the waterfall falling. 
Um, so that's nice. Yeah. Norea, you can go ahead and read next. That's great. Yeah. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, so I'll start. Walking into my living room, I suddenly felt how my socks started getting wet as if I I've stepped on a poured milk on board. Expecting the worst, I cautiously looked down. Oh no, no. I unconsciously whispered as my worst fear came true. I don't know how to swim. The fear locked me into chains, tightly, without any chance to move my hands. I stood inside the place of joy. Family reunion. Water kept coming. The water reached my neck, washing off my shivers down the spine. Ready to drown. Okay, so your your uh your audio kind of broke up a little bit there, Naraya, uh, towards the end. I will but... send the copy in the chat then. Yeah, that, that's fine. Um, so what I what I really liked that I that I heard in there um was I, I just want to point out a few places that I thought were really great in that um, that I really appreciate. Uh, when you first uh, step in there, you feel uh, what you compared it to was the the feeling of stepping with your socks into spilled milk on the floor. Um, I love that because I have a five-year-old at home and I've done that even recently. And it's this feeling of like mild annoyance and disappointment, right? It's like not yeah, like yeah. a huge tragedy, but it's bad. And then, and then from there, things get worse and worse and worse. But I love that you kind of started with this small, very relatable image of, of the spilled milk and kind of got worse from there. That was really great. Um, okay, so then we also had, um, uh, let's see, Dilnaz wanted to read next. So why don't you go ahead, Dilnaz, you can go ahead and, and share that with us um, as well. Mine is kind of traumatic, but okay. Right. I was home alone looking at the photo photos with my friends and I, my hands trembling as I slided the album files. I haven't seen them for three years now. None of us were ready for such a break, but it seemed like it, I was the only one feeling all miserable. We had a common dream of going overseas and sitting on the beach drinking the milkshake. Suddenly, I heard some drops near me as if it was raining at home. Did I forgot to close the shower? The thought frightened me, and I stood up to go to check. As I was running to the living room, I could, I could feel that fresh and juicy smell along with the sound of a waterfall. I, could, I couldn't move as everything around was getting full of water. The sound of a breeze was definitely unexpected to hear in the middle of a neighborhood right at my house. The water reached me, and it was so cold and yet so calming, as if it knew I was going through tough times. It reminded me of my dream with my friends. Wow. That's, that's all. Yeah, I like the, uh, the cold but calming, like it knew you were going through tough times. Deep. Um, Thank you. If anybody else wants to comment on any of this too, that's that's great. Um, Roshan, how are we doing on time? We've got Sagida and Shirin still want to read. Do we have time for that? Um, do we have we we have about forty five minutes? So yeah, I'm I'm open to it. Um, okay. I, I want to get I want to get people working on their essays uh, soon ish, but I'm I'm open to it. So um, Sagida, we'll have you read next, and then Shirin, you can read after that. Okay. Okay. Um... I was peacefully reading my 1984 yellow covered book when it started. At first, I only heard only uh, I only heard water running down as if someone opened a sink for shed. What is happening? I yelled, and there was nobody in the room to answer it. Um, I um I raised I raised my head from the book and looked around. There was water on the floor coming from a painting, a waterfall painting. Whoa. I came closer to it, but couldn't see anything new. Only feel, um, but only feel socks. I uh, only feel my socks soaking in the water. Water didn't stop pouring. The sound got louder. It started pumping in my ears. Water droplets on my face reminded me of a trip near Niagara waterfall. Great. 
Wow, good. I like, I, again, here I like the juxtaposition. Um, and what I mean by that, I guess, is, is the, uh, uh, the extreme difference between the, the pounding in your ears and then like the droplets from Niagara. There's like this violence of the experience that you're feeling right there, plus like the kind of piece of what you see in that painting, right? Um, really cool, really cool. Um, so Sakita, we'll, we'll have you, I'm sorry, uh, Shirin, we'll have you read next. And I'm sure everybody has uh, great stuff to read, but we're, we're gonna kind of stop after that. If we have more time at the end, I might have some more people read if they want to, uh, but I wanna kind of move on to our next activity after that. So uh, Shirin, if you'd like, you can go ahead and share. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah. Um, as I set my gaze as a soothing and disturbing picture, I felt as the underneath of my feet got wet. Oh no. Damn to sheer cat's evil trick. Flat in the room was swaying away sofas, my collections of movies and heritage ring. I, ra I, I rushed to save it as I was Usain Bolt and as I have immediately reached for the wooden ring, I heard the water burbling. That's it, game's over. The last thing I have remembered is the sour taste of coastal water. Farewell, world. Farewell, grandfather. Wow, interesting. The farewell, the farewells are interesting. There's definitely a darkness there, and I, I like the introduction of grandfather. Like that feels like the start of some whole new story, right? Um, great, guys. So people who read, thank you very much. Uh, Dilnaz is saying she was nervous while reading it. I, I think it is always kind of a nerve-wracking experience to read. Uh, to a group of people. So I really appreciate your bravery. Uh, people who didn't read, I really appreciate uh, and love some of the writing that we have in this chat. Uh, we'll make sure to save the chat so that you can actually look at some of that later if you'd like to as well. Um, so Rachmet, everyone. Uh, but this is just kind of a fun example to get us going to what we really want to work on, which is your essays for university, right? And so um, remember, what have we done so far? I'm just going to go back a little bit in our presentation to show, okay? All right, so the first thing we did, we need to do is you need to choose a scene, something that can actually grab people's attention. Once you've chosen that scene, we want to try to use those senses, like you guys just did so incredibly well, try to use those senses to put us in your scene. And that scene should somehow connect to what you want to answer or write about in your university essay, okay? So we're gonna try that now, all right? And, and this will be something where you're actually working on your essay uh, kind of on your own. Roshan, I'm not sure the best way to, to share this writing um, or to look at people's writing. I guess people can share screens if they want to um, or, or in the chat box, but do you have any thoughts on that? How would, how would students share writing? What would you like to, to see? Uh, okay, so you want them to write something. Uh, I'd, like them to, I'd like them to either take the essay that they're maybe working on for their, for their admissions essay, um, or if they're not working on one, to at least try starting to work on like an, uh, an, an introduction, I guess. Um, but, but this is just one example. Um, and if you have a different topic for your essay, that's fine. Um, but I was thinking, uh, so this is one of the very common topics um, for personal statements uh, prompts, right? Which is discuss an accomplishment, event, or realization that has sparked a period of personal growth and a new understanding of yourself or others. Uh, I'd be open to another topic as well. Um, but I was hoping people could work on uh, maybe one paragraph trying to hook the reader, um, something that kind of sparked a period of growth or, or a moment of change in their life. Um, or, or whatever it is that they are actually writing their admissions essays about. I'm not, I'm not sure I'm new to um, I think like those students who are actually working on computers right now, they can probably share screens. Okay. Some students who probably um, join through their um, like phones. Oh yeah, yeah, sure. Um, so what I was hoping, we've got about we got about 40 minutes here. I was hoping students could actually take some of what we've done with the hook writing stuff and actually mm. try to try to inject it in some way or other into their essay so that we could actually look at those and discuss them, and, uh, you know, yeah. uh, once, once they've had some time to do that. I think it's a good idea and we can actually start right now. Yeah. And maybe we will have some time so some students um, will be able to share 
That'd be great. Um, and so we've, I, I've given 20 to 25 minutes here. That was just kind of a, a random arbitrary number. I'm not sure what's appropriate, um, but I wanted, I wanted students to have some real time to, to think and, and to try to write. Um, um, mm -hmm. to, to, I think to 20 them. minutes is, should be enough. Okay, so let's, um, let's say читали темы эссе. Да, то есть у вас есть либо вот эта тема, либо то, над чем вы работали с Томасом, либо вы можете зайти в Common App Essay Prompt и выбрать что-то, что вам подойдет. Да, вы уже все... Like, they did brainstorming exercises. Great. I'm pretty Great. much sure that they should have some ideas and maybe some students actually started writing. I mean, Great. I always hope that they uh, started. Um, and yeah, if they can take just 20 minutes and uh, work on their essays, it would be nice. So if you haven't started writing yet, if you have, great, and we can build on that. If you haven't started writing yet, that's also okay. Um, just think what, what you did in the brainstorm and let's build on that now. Let's paint a picture like this, like this picture we have here um, to describe or to answer the prompt here or another prompt that you've been looking at maybe with Thomas, okay? And so we'll take 20 minutes to do that. I give you an option. I could put on music if you'd like, or if you prefer to work in silence or just with your own music at your house, that's okay too. Okay. Any questions before we start? Okay. Guys, um, do you have any questions? So we'll do this for the next 20 minutes or so. If there are any questions, I'm, I welcome you to use the chat box. You can actually message just me if you want. If you're uh, embarrassed about asking a question or something, that's fine, okay? So we'll get started. I might put on some music if you don't mind. Um, I like music, so. You know, it's like when there are no questions, I actually feel, um, it actually makes me feel a bit nervous. <laughs> me too, me too. Um, I just wanna make sure, do we understand what we want to do here? I'll bring the screen back in a moment. Okay, um, are uh, there any those questions students who understand, can you just put like pluses? Yes, if you understood, please put pluses. I mean, it looks like, yeah, they got it. <laughs> they got it. Cool. I'll put the questions back up on the screen in a moment. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put on some lo-fi hip-hop beats because I, I always feel like those kind of help me work. Um, if, if it's not your thing, you can just silence your, uh, you just silence your computer. That's cool. Да, ребят, вы уже начали, ну, надеюсь, работать над своими эсэшками, поэтому у вас есть такая замечательная возможность попробовать написать первый э, абзац, да, чтобы он был интересный, чтобы он охватывал э, читателя, при этом вы полностью не раскрываете, то есть вы не пишете summary, Thank you. 
All right. Guys, I think we'll come back now. Um, if you still need more time to do this, that's fine. One of the great and also kind of scary things about writing is that it's never really done. Um, your favorite book, the writer probably wishes they had taken more time and realizes they just had to finish and, 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 and say it was done at some point. But it's always good to take more time. Um, this is just uh, the ideas to get us started on our path towards writing your essay, right? So I've already gotten um, at least one really kind of beautiful introduction here. I'm not going to name the student, but I will, um, I, I will say that it was a very nice kind of descriptive uh, essay. Um, I'm not going to share it here because I feel like the student maybe prefers that it was private. Um, but there was some really great, great dis uh, descriptive stuff, use of dialogue, uh, which was really nice as well. So um, would anybody like to share what they have? Um, and we can talk about it if you have any questions about it. Um, but I'm, I'm open to that. And if you need more time, I'm, I'm happy to give you more time too. So we'll see. I'll, I'll be looking at the chat to see what our thoughts are. Great. Okay, I got another one here uh, from somebody who's uh, just gotten to meet their their new teacher and compares the adventure to being somewhat like um, starting off in Harry Potter, kind of this world of adventure. That's a really nice connection as well, um, and lets us know that this person is is someone who had a really big uh, impact on our lives. Uh, so that's excellent too. Thank you for that. Anybody else? Um, and if you want to share it privately with me, I understand. I'm not going to force you to share something publicly. But if you share publicly, we could probably all talk about it. And I'm sure we'll love to see what you have. Um, so you, you don't be shy um, if you don't want to be shy. So, uh, But I won't force you. Okay, so Almas has shared with us. Um, and Almas was the one I was just talking about. So let's let's go ahead and look at Almas's. And uh, let's see, what, what, do you, what do you think about his, uh, what he's got here? Um, so uh, why don't you read what he's written? We're not worried about grammar. We're not really worried about spelling. While you're reading, Almas's intro, I do want to um, go to something that Ali Khan has just said, because I think a lot of us probably feel this way. I can imagine what I want to talk about, but it's hard for me to express it on the paper for some reason. This is one of the biggest challenges of writing. Um, how do we, this is just like going back to that Bishbar Mach thing. How do you tell Thomas about a food he's never eaten, right? And so the descriptive language is kind of the tool that gets us there. But that certainly doesn't mean it's easy, right? And there are some ideas that are very hard to express. Like how do we, I think writers have spent centuries, maybe all of human history, uh, trying to describe love. Uh, because if, if I say love to you, well, you know what love is to an extent, but um, you may not know love the same way I know love, right? Like maybe you think about love with your, your mother or something like that. I think about love for pizza, right? These are very different things. Um, and so, so the ability to describe ideas is a very difficult uh, task, right? Um, and so, Alejandro, you're not alone there. Wow. Wow. So we've got, I've got kind of a, a, a dark hook here. Uh, from someone who describes themselves as having a wet face, red eyes, and a taste of salt on the lips. 
what a great way to say that you're upset and crying without without just going right there in a summary, right? So we're we're really putting ourselves um, in that emotional place that, that the writer was at. Really nice. Okay, not enough space for you here, Sagita. That's that's okay. Um, so what what we want to work on um, what we want to work on is is getting something that we feel can put the reader where we are. And sometimes it's I would I would say maybe Roshan will disagree with me here, but my personal opinion is it's better to have too much than too little. And once we have kind of too much, we can start working on that long process of narrowing down to what we really want to say. Uh, but that's that's kind of my personal opinion there. Um, okay, so wow. Okay, the, the comparison of tears to an aggressive uh, river stream on a mountain. Wow, and then the winter blizzard inside of my room. So a lot of comparisons with, with weather and our feelings. That's a big one. Um, yeah. Yes, um, so I'm getting questions. Do people like, do I like the essays that I'm looking at? I like everything I've been seeing. Um, one of the things about writing, I, I would never say I like or dislike something. Um, I, I, I appreciate your bravery and your ability to uh, to share this stuff with me. Um, and so I, I do like it very much. Um, I think writing can always be stronger, but I, I don't think that what you've done is bad. And I love the use of this descriptive language to try to put me there. The answer is yes, okay? I, I like it all very much. Um, great, yeah. Um, and so uh, what do I want to do here? Um, I'm going to let Sagida do some share screen. She would like to share her screen so we can see her writing. Go ahead. That sounds great. You can talk too if you'd like. Okay, so I could talk about this, but we're all seeing this here. Let's let's give a couple. Let's give some comments here. What what do we think about this intro? What are you liking about it? Let's focus on our positives here. What what, what are you liking about this? I feel like it's not it's not just the intro. It became like a half of essay, or even like most of it. At this point, you think this is most of the essay? Yeah, it's like half the first half of the essay. I would say. Okay, so my, my initial reaction to that statement, and I don't mean to be critical here, but that would be a pretty short essay for a, an admissions essay. Um, I think we could probably add more to it. So um, if this was the end of physics, the, the first question I would have is, um, any end is also a beginning. So what was, the, what was it the beginning of, right? Um, and I think we could maybe move into that as well. Um, I like what I what I like in terms of the the I'm really focused on descriptive language in this workshop. So here's what I like. I like uh, I like the idea that we've got a room full of five year olds here, and some of them have gotten candy, and others have lost it. Um, I have a five year old at home, so that that resonates with me. I, I know exactly what that's like. Um, I've seen it happen both ways. But that's that's really nice. Um, um, in my case, I feel that like beginning is a bit long, and I yeah. would. Add the first maybe three uh, lines and just start from the step away. I saw white sheets uh, of paper and blah, blah, blah. Kind of like here her story starts 
And I do not think that she needs to have that description in the beginning. Like okay. last person just finished, going home, some rest, blah, blah, blah. Just, uh, it's like too long. I actually like how it ends. That she shows that I wasn't happy, I wasn't satisfied, I was indifferent. I kind of like that. It shows that uh, she came to the point where uh, these Olympians are, are not so satisfying. Yeah, you know, I, I think something we might wanna, I, I agree with a lot of what Roshan is saying here. And I think uh, something that we may wanna play up here. So I was telling you, I like the idea of like some, 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 of, the, some of these five-year-olds got a candy bar, other ones lost a candy bar. Uh, I think it's also important, Sagita, that we notice that you don't, you don't feel like either of those people. You're not devastated. You're not overjoyed. There's that indifference, right? And so Roshan is right. That's that's a really nice moment that you talk about. I mean, it's not pleasant, but it's it's a good it's a good part of your writing here. And so that might be something to focus on a little bit more. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Anybody else want to share anything or or more comments about Sagita? Mariah, good uh, good advice there. Wow. Wow, so here I've got a, I'm not gonna give too many details here, but I've got a, a very descriptive uh, uh, introductory paragraph about a uh, playground competition um, that went from, from being a contest with another student on the playground uh, to being with grandmother um, at home covered in blood. Um, so that's, that's, pretty, that's pretty descriptive. Uh, that puts us in a position where we may wonder what's happening Next, um, something that I want to caution, I don't mean that that was bad writing at all. None of this is bad writing. I love all of it. Um, however, when we are writing uh, college admissions essays, a lot of people go back to something that happened in their childhood, and it certainly can. That's not a bad thing, um, but you don't have to. Sometimes the most impactful or meaningful thing happened to us just recently um, or is even happening right now. So you, you don't have to focus on something that happened in childhood. Although you can, I don't. I don't mean that any of, of that makes makes a, an essay like that bad. Um, but Roshan, would you agree? Like sometimes the, the more relevant stuff is something that's actually more recent in our lives. Usually, yeah, it's something that is recent. But it just depends, you know. Like um, Jarbahan, he was writing an essay about the time when his dad passed away. And Jarmahan was really young, but there was this situation when his uncle uh, tried to steal uh, their apartment, mm. like brother of his father. And plus, uh, that uncle managed to put Jarmahan to the orphanage. And it was just so difficult for him. So that event, even though it was like 12 years ago, he still, um, it was difficult for him to overcome. And I actually felt that he um, overcame that situation when he was actually writing about it. Mm, great. That's really good. That That's can be uh, so difficult something that, that Roshan is. Go ahead, sorry. Yeah, so it just depends on what kind of events. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Something that you're kind of illustrating there very well, I think. Um, is that writing can actually be a form of therapy in its own way, right? So if, if we have something that we're processing, it's a good way to, to, to go through that um, in a lot of times. Um, something I would want to say, I've gotten a lot of kind of private messages here with your writing, which is fine. I, I don't mind that at all. Um, make sure whatever you share is you're comfortable enough with that you would share with an admissions person that you don't know, um, because you will be sharing it. Um, so I mean, when you write the essay, that should be something that you're comfortable uh, sharing with others, right? Um, and, and the other thing I would say is a lot of times this impactful stuff, especially that happened in our childhood, might be traumatic in nature. Um, and it's, it's fine to write about a trauma, uh, but you could actually write about uh, something that impacted your life in like a positive way. Uh, like that essay about the, uh, the, the chemistry teacher that had a really big impact on your life, right? And so that, that would be okay too. 
okay? We can, we can talk about positive or negative or something in between, right? So, great, okay? Um, guys, that's about what I had. We've got about four minutes left. Um, I'll take any comments, questions about anything, whatever, or Roshan, if you have any notes or anything you'd like to add. Um, um, maybe we can give them like a homework. I really hope that the students will actually start writing something. They had sessions on brainstorming, they had sessions on hooks. Um, I'm just not sure if they actually check the uh, topics, you know, common app essay prompts. And I would actually like them to check those topics and think about something that they can already start writing. Mm -hmm. Because the next session is going to be about conclusions, then we probably need some work to be done. Yeah, definitely. Um, okay, you guys got that, right? So there's, there's uh, Roshan, I'm correct here, right? There's seven different prompts that we can choose from for the Common App, is that right? Yeah, there are about seven. Okay, so we could look through that list of prompts. Um, I'm sure Roshan could share that with you. You could also find that on, online yourself on the Common App website. Um, but you would just choose one of those um, and try to write, um, try to start a hook, um, but then try to write your essay. Don't worry if, if things are kind of messy. That's what the uh, editing process is for later, um, but but getting the ideas on paper, like Ali Khan was saying, is often the hardest part. And so if we can get that out there, that's a really good thing. Um, and then I'd, I'd be happy to meet any or all of you, um, and hopefully more, um, next week when we do our, our session on conclusions. So, um, Shirin asks, can we start for now from the hook and outline? I think that's a great idea. Yeah. Uh, Norberg again, um, sorry if I'm not saying your name correctly. There will absolutely be a recording of this session. Yeah. Any other questions, thoughts, comments? I hope so. Thank you, Camila. Uh, it's, it's fun for me too. Guys, we're living in really uncertain times right now uh, for everyone. This, this COVID-19 stuff, stressful, scary, um, nervous, all of that. Um, I, can I share the names of the songs? Um, kind of, uh, not really, and, and here's why. Um, let me see if I can share, here, I can. Um, so here's what I can do. I can share with you that this is actually a YouTube video called Lo-Fi Hip Hop Radio Beats to Relax and Study To. Um, it is tremendous, it's 24 hour, they just share all different uh, instrumental beats and music, and uh, I highly recommend it. It's a great way to get into your flow. So yeah, lo-fi, all into it. Yeah, I'm I'm an old man. I'm 35, but I'm a pretty cool old man. So I like uh, I like lo-fi hip hop beats. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Other questions? Roshan, is there anything I'm missing here? Um, I think we we actually have no questions. So. I'm going to um, download this video on our YouTube channel. And as usual, I'm going to send you the links. And right now I have to go because I have a webinar starting in one minute. So it's like my uh, top management DC wants to see me. <laughs> yeah. like, take it on me. Session was productive. Great. I, I loved it. Yeah, um, guys, that's my email. Go ahead and send me emails if you want. I'm gonna report this back to my boss um, as well. I feel like this was really successful and enjoyable for me. Uh, we're gonna get going because we gotta, we gotta let Roshan get on to our next thing. I hope to see you next week. We'll talk about conclusions, okay? Thank right, you. Man, thank you guys for your participation. It was wonderful. Bye-bye. Paka-paka. Paka-paka.